think I've always uh, been sort of addicted to movement. As a child, I was hooked on movement. I was moving so much all the time, uh, to the point where my parents actually took me to the doctor because they could not understand how I had this much energy. I was continuously restless. Uh, the doctor, had it been these days, I probably would have been on some sort of medication, right? But at that time, uh, he prescribed movement, some sort of movement. So they put me in dance school. And that is how I became a dancer. It wasn't like an obvious choice, it was something that grew very much over time. I liked it very much, I loved the times when I could go as a child and I could just like go bananas. We had this teacher, she would put uh, colored lights and just put on bolero by Ravel. And that gave birth to a sort of feel feeling of movement, it felt like a good way to, almost like an emotional, visceral diary. And then when it came time to choose profession, I just Without thinking too much, I chose dance high school. What I love about dance is... Uh, it's like when God is conducting movement through me, or the universe, or love, or whatever you want to call that higher power. I feel like that is... Uh, first of all, it brings me completely into present. The movement that yoga gives me is understanding all that energy that I felt inside as a child and my restlessness in general in life. Uh, contextualizing, understanding that life is movement, that movement exists on the inside and it's uh, a more calming place to hook your mind. <laughs> so if you're going to be addicted to one type of movement, that's one that actually feels uh, useful. It brings you very much to the real movement of life, right? To the real qualities that we struggle with in our human existence. Then I started teaching dance and I realized that the teaching of yoga can get a little, mm, a little serious, a little pompous almost, like if you have to dress up in this yoga teacher uh, feeling. Whereas the teaching of dance, you can just have fun or I can just have fun. I can be a clown, I can be enthusiastic, I can bring my absolute childish love of dance into the game. And I think I inspire my students doing that. I think, no, I know, they have fun. Yes, so that whole thing in the air. Yes, that's how it goes. So, we come here, we go there, then we swim out, we swim out, we stop here. We go right, left, right. So all that happens almost without stop. Your body is just going like <laughs> this has to be more fit. The whole thing has to be done. Small. Yes, Amalia. Push. Here, here. From here, you're gonna come. Two. Yes. And bring the fist in. Yeah. And then look. Ah. Oh. Yes, baby. if you bring it back into the context of movement, is kind of returning the favor to life. Life has taught me so much by allowing me to be mobile. So I will always have food for thought, food for, for practice. Being a student is a completely new, old thing, of course. And becoming a student of martial arts now, I the tender age of 47 has been very interesting. Um, of course, I've had so much help from all my previous uh, disciplines, all the training that I've done so far. Uh, but the specificity of that particular branch of movement, of martial arts, is intriguing, fascinating, and very challenging.
And it's nice to be a student because it allows you to once again embody that beginner's mind. Uh, and I have embodied the teacher's mind for so long, so beginner's mind uh, grounds you, opens you. And then the completing of the circle. I always thought that uh, somehow this internal restlessness was a curse because I could not be still, I could not just make easy choices, I couldn't just stay put. But you know what, as I approach 50, I feel like, yeah, good. <laughs> it, was, it was actually good in the end. Uh, now that everything is contextualized by aging, I have a family. I'm being more settled. This restlessness is the the engine of life in many ways, at least of my life, spurring my search on for love, for freedom, for happiness.